What's up guys, I'm Kevin with Victory 4x4. In this video, we're gonna be installing our strike rear bumper on the back of this Lexus GX550. So we'll start things off with some disassembly. We're gonna have a few fasteners to remove as we work our way around this rear fascia so that we can get it off of the vehicle. We'll start things out here by kind of removing the fasteners for this fender flare, which is gonna kind of translate over to the other side. So some of this you'll only see us do on one side of the vehicle. Now there are a couple different types of fasteners in here. So first you're gonna grab a four mil hex and you've got one screw here and one screw here that can both be removed. Then we'll switch to a panel tool. You can use a screwdriver for this as well, but all of these plastic clips, you'll just have to kind of pop up the center and then the entire retainer will come out of there. And then you have another one of those right up top here. And then really just kind of playing it safe, we're gonna pull the small clip out up here as well. It's similar style to the ones we just removed, but much smaller. So I did grab a small flat screwdriver here to pop this one out. We don't really intend to remove this entire flare up to this point, but when you're pulling on those plastic clips, anything can happen and if this one pops, we don't wanna damage this small clip down here. Then moving underneath here, you'll have two button head screws that you'll remove with your four mil hex, as well as it looks like three right here that are hex head. You'll need to switch to a 10 mil for those. The center cover can then be removed. You're just gonna have to pop the two clips down here, which will let you release the center cover. And then you can just grab a hold of this and pop this whole outer trim section off and set that aside. Next with the hatch open, you can pop the top cover off of the bumper face here. We're just gonna get underneath the seam over here with a plastic pry tool and pull or pry up and then we'll just work our way across releasing all of these clips then coming up top here we'll remove this inner kind of black trim just between the door seal and the tail light and everything out here this top section you can just pull straight out and it's just got a couple clips on the inside and then work down doing the same thing for the rest of these and all the way across Next, we'll remove these painted plastic covers. Now, use some caution with these. Once again, since they are painted, you will have to get in here and pry with something. So I've got my plastic pry tool. You could wrap something in tape or a microfiber as well, since this is painted surface and painted surface. But essentially, this needs to slide straight back due to the orientation of the clips and not out or not rotating in any way so that you don't damage those. Then grab your 10 mil and you've got a screw in each of these kind of recessed pockets here as well as multiple all the way along the back edge where you removed all of that trim as well. Now this is when you'll need to pull those flares out if you haven't already. So again, a plastic pry tool is helpful here. You've got two clips in behind here. These are kind of the trickiest of the two. They're gonna be the stiffest to get popped free. And then all of the ones along here come out pretty easy. And hopefully you removed all of those clips because that'll, along the bottom that is, because that'll allow these to all release and we can just get this thing safely out of the way for now. With the flare out of the way, you'll see three clips in behind here that can all be removed. 
From there, continuing around, you'll have to pull back this kind of rear fender liner section, and then you've got a clip here as well as one further in there that you're not going to be able to see at this time, but it kind of just runs right in line with here. These need to be popped free, so you'll reach in from the back side and release the tabs just like that. I have an example of one here, so they kind of go into a square hole and they just have two opposing tabs that need to be pinched in to release that and allow it to slide out. If we continue in closer to the center, kind of between the muffler and the trailer plug here, you've got another screw that's kind of recessed or tucked up in here. You'll need to find that. And then the equivalent screw on the other side is kind of between the spare tire and the tow hook. You then have two electrical connectors to unplug down inside of each of these recessed cutouts. So the one over on this side is pretty conventional. It's got just a standard like thumb press style tab and then you can pull that back to separate it. Now on the passenger side, these are becoming pretty conventional as well, but you've just got a thumb press style tab down here and then you have to actually rotate this white clip, which will allow you to pull that out. At this point, the only thing holding this on is these outer fascia retainers. So getting your hand behind the front edge up there by the wheel opening, you can kind of pull straight out which will free this up. And once you've done that on both sides, this whole thing can just slide right off the back of the vehicle. At this point, this foam section in here across the top can just be lifted out and pretty much just thrown away. You won't be reusing this. And then you'll need to grab a 12 mil socket. You're gonna have two bolts here on the back of these outside corner crash braces, if you will, and then three out along this outside edge. With all those fasteners removed, it does have a little retainer clip in here, so you'll have to kind of rotate it around, and then there you can see those three mounting holes from the side. We're now gonna work on a little bit of disassembly with this rear fascia. So first we're gonna get these kind of fender liners or mud flap situations, if you will, out of here. They're really just held in with one of those black kind of square-ended clips, which I already kind of cheated and got that one part way out. So you can get that out of there, and then this entire assembly, if you took it off in the same order as us, will come out as well. Next, we'll remove the wire harness and the corresponding sensors. So these are different from side to side. You wanna make sure you're paying attention to that. It's probably a good idea to snap a couple photos of this even so that you get the correct sensor in the correct location once you're installing it into the new bumper. But you've got one sensor down here that you can just get underneath with a panel tool and pop the clip up there. You've got the same thing for the main center section of the harness in here. And really that one is just kind of double-sided taped to the fascia. So that whole clip came off, but we can work to remove that in just a moment. So there's a little bit of a closer look at that. Once again, we can remove that in just a moment. And then for each of these, there's just a tab top and bottom that you'll want to kind of pull out on. You can press in from the outside with one hand while you do this, and that'll kind of help release these. And then they should just slide out pretty easily like that and you can do that on all of those style sensors. So here on the other side we removed those sensors like we already mentioned. We've got a couple of those clips popped similar to over there and you can then work to remove all of the rest of this which these just have a slightly different style clip so you can slide that until it kind of stops and then you'll need to press down on the center locking tab which will release that the rest of the way out of that slot and that kind of frees up the rest of this. You've got another one of those here and here that will need to be removed and then another one of those just kind of center pop style clips down here on the bottom of that one. And with all of those out of the way this entire harness assembly can now be removed. We'll then remove the reflectors by pulling the two screws here with our 10 mil socket. You'll save that hardware because these will be reinstalled later on, but from there, they each have two tabs that protrude through the fascia. They have a locking tab on them, so while pressing out, you'll need to release that tab on each side. 
that should free this up and we can set it off to the side for now. You can also remove this factory tow hook or recovery hook at this time. It has one bolt up behind here that I already loosened with a flex head ratcheting wrench. If you don't have that, you're probably gonna need to get the spare tire down using the factory spare tire removal tools. You're probably gonna wanna do that at some point anyway, and hopefully you're putting it out on one of our adventure carriers. So go ahead and just do that. And then you're left with one bolt here. Again, these require a 17 and we can get this out of the way. And then take your 12 mil and remove these brackets. There's one per side just held in with a single bolt. So now we're ready to cut our fascia to fit with our new bumper. We've got our setup here on a couple carts. Ideally, you'll do this up on some carts like we have it here or on a large table, something to get you up off the ground. You could mark this out with it hung loosely back on the vehicle. We just don't recommend cutting on there since there are some wire harnesses and components that wind up pretty close in behind the plastic here during that process. So moving in here a little closer, you can see that we've already done that in several spots, kind of two to three inches apart all the way along here. So you can do the same. We put this tape down on this area just because our fascia is black. So obviously if we grab a black marker, that's not gonna show up on there. If you got a brighter color, just go ahead and mark right on your paint. You're not really gonna hurt anything there. And again, do that in multiple locations across here to kind of get this set up. And keep in mind that that five and a half inch mark when you trim this out is intended to leave you approximately a three eighths inch gap between the fascia and the new bumper once installed. So if you would like that to be a little tighter or if you're a little uncomfortable with that and you're not too sure, you can always change that measurement, add a little more and leave a little extra material there and kind of trim it to fit toward the end. But five and a half inch is our recommendation. Again, leaving about a three eighths inch gap. Now from there, we do recommend some sort of laser level to kind of line up on here and get you set up with a nice straight line essentially using that to connect the dots all the way across. And then the laser level, hopefully you can see it on camera there, will wrap this corner a little better than what you're gonna be able to do with just a piece of tape or even a flexible tape measure like the one we have here, which it can be done this way. Ideally, you pick out some of your points on here and then lay that out nice and parallel to those. And then when you get back to this edge, you're gonna to have to kind of pick a spot where you want to start angling in and basically for us that winds up about at the 16 and a half inch mark as measured from the front edge of the fascia up here at what would be the wheel opening and from there you're going to take and turn that in and kind of follow it along to the point on this trim piece that is essentially the front edge of this raised rib right here with how we have it marked out to hopefully point out that point that I was referring to a little more clearly, I did pull the other side trim piece just to get it out here where you can see it. Essentially, that's what I'm talking about, which is the equivalent of this location out here on the driver's side. And then you're just gonna follow the seam along the back of those as your cut line. So basically right there and right here. And we're gonna kind of connect the dots across the two. And then keep in mind after you cut this, you're gonna to have to do some cleanup along these edges, ideally with a flap disc or some sort of sanding disc. Even just a sharp razor knife helps to clean up these edges pretty darn well. So we'll do the same thing right inside of here on this one. And as we kind of shift it around the side just a little bit here, this is kind of the area where things do get a little bit tricky once again. So this is where with your flexible tape, you could come in across and use that as a straight line, or in our case, we have the laser that we're recommending to you. And that makes a pretty good contour across there that you can then come in and just trace out with your marker again as kind of a dotted line. Or if you wanted to take the time, you could slowly trace that out by hand. What works out really well for us and what we typically recommend is some of this fine line tape that we can now come in here and just lay out and basically connect the dots with all of our marks all the way along this edge. So this is pretty easy. Again, you're just starting at your front mark 
and following it all the way back. You can achieve this with some blue tape as well. This stuff's just a little more flexible, so it makes it a little easier across some of the contours on here. Then moving in here a little further, you need to draw a straight line essentially parallel to this edge and kind of in line with the edge of these raised cutouts. And basically you're gonna line that up with the inside edge of this rectangular cutout here that is for a clip originally. You can just use any straight edge really to kind of lay that out and mark it. It's not a super critical spot. <clears throat> and then continue that along the side right here, moving in toward the center of this fascia. Now what we're aiming to do with this cutout is essentially hide the cut edge underneath this reflector once everything is complete and reinstalled. So once you snap that in fully, you just wanna make sure, obviously I'm still sticking out a little bit here because I don't wanna have to undo the clips once again, but you just wanna make sure that your cut edge winds up trimmed up nicely and hidden underneath there for the best appearance as a finished product. Continuing in, you're basically just using the inside of this bend where these two edges meet as your guide. You can use a straight edge if that helps you out, but basically you're just gonna con connect these all the way across here. So something like this. Try and be as nice and straight as possible. And you can kind of just use the fascia itself as your guide as you work the rest of the way along here. So here's a little closer, better look at that once we have everything marked out. So again, kind of just using the existing contours of the fascia as your guide. Then kind of skipping over this opening, you can continue that same thing all the way across here in toward the center. Where you have these little indents, you can basically just draw those straight across. It's just gonna make it much easier when you go to cut. Same thing right here at the actual center of the fascia. And then basically repeat that whole process the rest of the way along and over to the passenger side. So just to kind of recap that and hopefully make things as clear as possible, I came back and trimmed off my tape below what will be my cut line, which again, I'm using the bottom edge of my orange tape here as that five and a half inch cut line. Do whatever works best for you there. If it's just little marks kind of pointing or indicating what the cut line is for you, whatever really works, something that's gonna help you remember that. And then at least a little bit of tape up here is always a good idea to help preserve the painted surface that we are gonna be saving and reusing on the vehicle. So safety glasses and gloves are kind of bare minimum we're gonna recommend for this step. As far as cutting tools, we do most of this with a four and a half inch cutoff disc. You have some different options. You can grab an air cutoff, which might help you out in the tighter space back in here. We even have a small body saw that we sometimes use when cutting these. So use the tools you have available to you. And when it comes to the sanding and finishing side of things, a flap disc for our grinder works pretty well, or some of these flat sanding pads on an air grinder will clean those edges up as well. And then just keep in mind that when you're cutting this, you might have some hot plastic kind of flinging around or flying around, so don't get burned there. So continuing around through here, I am gonna switch to that air cut off. I added a couple pieces of tape back in here and it's not a bad idea if this winds up being too flimsy once you've made the cut along here. You can also just leave a small tag of plastic still connected right at the end if you want to. Again, whatever works best for you there. And then we'll get this cut out and work into the center. Once you have that cut all the way across, you can get this out of the way as you may need to get in here just a little deeper to cut out the rest of this indent. And then just keep in mind everything out here on this side of your cut line is just gonna be garbage after this. So if it works out for you to kind of mangle some of this up or something to help you get in there at an angle that works better, so be it. Once again, this is trash after this cut. And then admittedly, I already went and did the passenger side cuts. So what I did find is coming in from underneath 
kind of leaves a little bit cleaner cut edge on the piece we're saving and kind of keeps some of that flying plastic down underneath here as well. So keep that in mind. If that works out and helps you, great. And you may notice that since I made a nice straight line across here, I've still got my gold mark inside of this indent as well as a little bit right here. Not critical, this straight line is probably gonna look cleaner in the end. So once again, you don't have to follow that completely exact. All we're looking to do is save this piece so that the factory trim can snap back into this once we get this fascia reattached to the truck. Since we're talking about this trim, now is a good time to come over here to the passenger side and nip this bottom tab off of both of these panels. That's just gonna leave you a nice clean edge all the way along here, again, using similar tools. So once you've done that properly, this is what you're left with. It is admittedly a little flimsy across the center here, so just keep that in mind as you're maneuvering it on to the vehicle. You will want the bumper in place, which you can kind of see here, we have our prototype on at this time, but you want your finished product on so that you can do a final test fit with this and then just make any final marks along the edge to trim to fit there and kind of even out your gaps anywhere that this comes in line with the bumper. So a little update to the cut now that we have everything removed here. Basically, we are gonna have you come back in and trim out this material that would be in here under the light, but we wanna do that in a very specific way. So we wanna save this kind of little tab or notch, if you will, that comes down in this radius. Again, I have it marked out here kind of roughly with my gold Sharpie, but you're saving, again, this little tab. I'll slip the light in here temporarily just to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like once it's all assembled. So basically we wanna keep this and then eliminate everything that you see right now underneath here. So I marked that out in a way where I can come in here, again, with my air saw or body saw, that'll be kind of nice and precise and allow me to cut right along this seam. If you don't have one of these, once again, just come in here carefully with your cutoff wheel. And if you wind up doing this where it's a little bit more of a straight line across here and across here, much like when we were out in this area. Not a huge deal as long as it's all tucked neatly in under that light and you can't see it once everything is fully installed. So again, that leaves you with a little bit of cleanup work to do along these edges. And then I did kind of leave that just as an example, but I can come back in here and finish trimming that out with my air saw as well. I wanna clean up this corner just a little bit because obviously I'm left with a little bit of a rough edge there right now. And then once we get our light in place, that stuff's all nice and neat and no longer visible under there with the bumper installed. Now, additionally, you're gonna need to cut the bottom portion of the fender flare off before it goes back in. Basically here, you can come right to the bottom edge at what would be the rear of the flare. And you're gonna measure up and mark at four inches. Basically nice and parallel to that bottom edge. And once you have that marked out, just grab some tape and make a nice steady line across there. Carry that all the way down into what would be the wheel opening once installed on the vehicle. And then we'll trim this off and essentially we'll just fit it up on the vehicle and trim it to fit the bottom edge of the fascia so you can make any minor adjustments as needed to that cut up on the vehicle. We'll use our cutoff wheel here much like the rest of the plastic components. We want to remove this connector as well as the driver's side connector in a similar location over there. These just require a 10 mil socket to pull this bracket off of the frame. And as you pull this back, 
There is a clip here on the one side that you'll have to kind of pop free. And then there is a tab inside of here that you're gonna to have to reach in with a small flat screwdriver or a pick to release, or admittedly I learned that you can just kind of pry on this and separate it because I do not intend to reinstall this. You can kind of feed this back up in after the bumper's in place and reuse this, but we're just gonna zip tie these up in a safe location once everything's installed. Next you can find this bracket. This is gonna be the first bracket we install up on the frame. This is the passenger side. You do have a left and a right to these or driver passenger to these, however you wanna look at it. So keep that in mind, find the right one. It's just gonna slide right on this back corner of the frame. And you can start by installing two of the flanged M8 hex head bolts in here. And then you're gonna have three out along this side as well that you'll see in just a second. So you'll get all five of those started. From here you can see those three now. We're pretty much just gonna run all those in kind of hand tight for now to kind of just support this bracket and keep it in place. You do have two more bolts you're gonna install here as well as one back here, but those will come in after the bumper is up here on the vehicle. So go ahead and get the other side installed. Then on the inside of the frame or the other end of that bolt, you're gonna have a black square washer that we provide, the standard flat washer, and then a half inch nut that are all gonna go on in here, and then you'll tighten this thing up by hand. From there, the prep work's pretty much done on the frame, so we can now get our bumper ready to go on and set up on those mounts. What you have to do here really varies a little bit depending on your install. So this is the perfect time to install your latch catches. If you're gonna be installing adventure carriers, you could even install those adventure carrier spindles at this time, or once it's up on the truck, really either way is fine there. But for the most detailed look at those, go ahead and check out the full adventure carrier install video. From there, you've got pod lights, hopefully, that you're gonna be installing in the pod light cutouts on these. Those are gonna vary a little bit from manufacturer to manufacturer, so follow their given instructions when it comes to getting their brackets and everything assembled and installed there. But the actual installation in the bumper is very similar for all of them. You've just got a front to rear slotted mounting tab inside of each cutout. So you can just slip these into place and use your manufacturer's hardware to bolt them in. Once all six of those are in and hand tight, you can grab a 3 16 hex or Allen and tighten these up. There are a couple different windows you can potentially push this through in here. You may have to remove the sensor from the harness if you're gonna route through this bottom one. Here on the passenger side of ours, it seems like going up over the light with these Baja Designs lights is gonna be the best solution there, but that may vary depending on your specific light. And then we'll of course get those pressed into the grommets. Moving now to the driver's side underneath here so we can show you this exhaust. Essentially what you have to do with this is remove the two rear hangers. So I've got one still attached here, the other one over here. It's essentially the same process for both, so we're just gonna show you one real quick. Basically, I'm just taking a pry bar and finding a spot up in here that we can pry against this. You want to support the exhaust while you do this and work at popping that off. They come off pretty easy on this one. And then this is just gonna hang and kind of rest down out of your way so you can access all your hardware up in here. You can support that with a strap or a jack if you want to, but it seems just fine for now. Now, if for any reason you feel like you're having some trouble getting that lined up and it needs to be manipulated kind of forward on this bolt head side, you can take a small pry bar and put it in here and that should allow you to kind of pry forward on this bolt head, helping to line it up up top. You shouldn't have to do much. Hopefully you don't have to do any at all, but once again, all your brackets and everything are still loose. So maybe some work will need to be done there. Not a huge deal. And then once again, once you have that lined up, reach through here and thread that nut on up top. Then you can come up top here and tighten these half inch button heads with a 5 16 hex. And at any point after that, you're free to get that light reinstalled. Then back underneath on this front wing support bracket, now is why you had to really drop that exhaust out of the way. Basically, you gotta get in here with a drill. You're gonna be installing half inch thread cutting bolts. So using the holes in the bracket as a guide, we're just gonna center punch these and drill them out to 7 16 That's gonna be the pilot hole size that will accept these half inch bolts. And then we're just gonna work our way through with a series of drill bits to get up to that 7 16 hole size. 
So I've got an eighth inch here to start out with. I'll probably do a quarter, three eighths, and then seven sixteenths. When installing these, you'll want a three quarter socket and then ideally an impact. You're gonna to wanna to put a decent amount of pressure up on this and then just drive that in and repeat the same process on the remaining holes. Once you do have all of those in, you can come back and tighten this through bolt out here on the side. And then again with your 5 16 hex, come back through and tighten these two button heads on the bottom. And then of course repeat that process on the other side. From there you can reinstall that exhaust to its hangers if you haven't done so already. And then now is a good time to mention these black plastic caps. If you're not gonna be running adventure carriers at this time, we're gonna recommend you install these both top and bottom of the adventure carrier spindle with just a little bit of RTV silicone sealant to prevent any moisture from getting in there and corroding that over time. So you can always add a carrier later on. The bottom one does have to go through here before you close this area up. So keep that in mind and get those in if necessary for you. And also keep that in mind, once again, if you're installing those carriers, you wanna have the spindle and all its hardware in before installing this cover. As far as the cover goes, here it is. It's got pre-installed nuts on the back side, so nothing to worry about there as far as hardware. We'll just slide it in to the opening, and then we have black quarter 20 button heads with washers that you're gonna line up and install in all of these hole locations. So you can get a corner started here, and then you're just gonna have to reach in from underneath to kind of help you manipulate that into position and start the remaining three. And with all those in loose, you'll tighten them up with your 5 30 seconds X. At this point, you can come back up and install your rear fascia section for hopefully the final time. Keeping in mind, you may have to do some final trimming along these edges once the bumper's all bolted down and in place to kind of square up your cut, make things look nice and parallel and clean there. You wanna make sure that you have the reflectors back in here at this time as well. And then we can just install this reusing factory hardware. You also may have some minor trimming to do in here to make sure that this plastic sits nice and tight to the metal tabs, those four that we would have tapped on earlier underneath here. So keep that in mind, pay close attention there. And then it's just factory hardware that you would have already been kind of familiar with. So it's the small black hex head coarse thread screws. There should be three out on each end here. And then you've got these larger washer black hex head fine thread screws to go here across the middle. You can then reinstall the painted plastic covers out here for the blind spot monitors. Make sure you get the front started in there and then just pop this back in. And then grab this rear trim section to snap back in kind of all the way along here, cleaning up this inner edge. followed by the small upper covers back in here that we don't want to forget on each side, followed by the factory fender flare out here, which you should pretty much already have trimmed, but again, do a final test fit there. Don't forget the clip that pops in here on these outside ends of your fascia, and then just make sure you have all of your clips back in here before snapping this in. Then we're gonna tidy things up out here where you're left with a little bit of an opening. You're gonna find this factory inner fender section that kind of filled out this bottom space before, but you're gonna to have to trim some of this off. So I have the passenger side that we've already done here. So you can see that as kind of a visual reference in the difference between the two. So you're basically getting rid of a good chunk of the bottom of that, as well as this kind of fold under flange. To use that as a reference, Basically, to give you some rough measurements, they're all gonna be a little bit case by case. As long as it's tucked in under here, you're never gonna see it and it's not a huge deal. 
but this end, you're looking at about six and a half inches of material. That stays pretty much the same all the way across the kind of flat section here before you get to the radius. And then all the way from the top down out here to where we kind of angle up and end our cut, you're about eight inches there to give you a reference. But once you have the original one held in here, you can kind of just use this as a guide and mark out your line on there as well, kind of following a similar shape to the factory edge up here. So here's ours cut. You can see my cut edge is a little bit different than that other one. Again, it's tucked behind there. It can be pretty crude and not really be a big deal down there. Keep in mind if you're running bigger tires on here that you do have this kind of 90 degree pointed nub that sticks out about three quarters of an inch roughly past the edge of the bumper. So if you're putting bigger tires in here, we're gonna run 35s on this one you may want to do something about that. So you can either grab a rubber mallet and tap it over. You can trim it off, whatever you're comfortable with there. Either way, it's gonna kind of tear the sealant on there. If you tap that over is what we learned on the other side. So you're gonna have to do something to seal that back up to prevent corrosion. So some panel sealant, silicone, something like that should work there. But if you're not running a much larger tire, you can probably get away at this point with just snapping this back in here. So you're reusing, you're gonna see that it obviously has to deflect around that in this case. And then you're just reusing the factory clip and screw down here to get that secured in. Hammered over like we now have it here. It makes that slide in a little bit easier. It doesn't have to deflect so much and it puts a little less pressure on the hardware in there. But same deal, just the clip up top over here. And then of course that factory Torx head screw. And that puts a pretty nice clean finish on this inside wheel opening. If you hadn't done so already, you wanna come back in and reinstall the two clips up top to retain the bottom side of this wheel well, or fender flare rather, and go do the same thing on the other side really for all of this if you haven't done so already. Once you've done that on both sides, really this installation is complete aside from those of you installing those adventure carriers. So once again, check out the adventure carrier install video, check out the camera relocation video that we will, will release for how to route your camera out to that adventure carrier and up through your spare tire. Check out our website for any more accessories you're gonna be installing on those adventure carriers. And as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can send us an email at info at victory4x4.com or just call us at 269-459-8447.